After that, Jacob set his feet in motion and traveled on to the land of the Orientals. Genesis 29.1 Hello, perceptive readers. This is Humanitarians Keep Your Humanity, Part 4 of 5. And in order to keep this within 15 minutes, as I've stated before, I would love to actually share all the references from God's Word, the Holy Bible, uh, that you see will prove the point. So what I am going to do is actually place in part five all the references of what I'm talking about in a reading. Okay, and so let me say again, humanitarians, this is part four of humanitarians keep your humanity. You know, in thinking about the persons who I would say are part of my audience, you see in this line of work, uh, just like um, reading the scriptures of uh, people who loved God's word uh, back in the day during Jesus' day and after Jesus left the earth, you see, it did mention uh, that there would be animosity at times against them, you see. What I'm going to talk about, uh, and this is leading up to, you see, the whole point about being a humanitarian, is one, the audience that you know that I'm talking to. Uh, you see, uh, even recently, there was somebody who asked the background of another person and then the person referenced them as a first responder, you see, uh, type experience. And so one thing that I want to say about uh, first re responders, you see, uh, they are not people who would be considered uh you see, insignificant or even cowards. See, some persons will understand why I reference that. Now, with that uh, being said, first responders, personalities for emergencies, uh, etc. Uh, they also uh, have a sense of humor. You know, um, I remember uh, listening to a song, uh, and it was uh, George Strait, I believe, who made that song with uh, the heaviness or the weightiness of the badge. And that video uh, took it from these type of emergency personnel and first responders, uh, their experience, why they feel it in that way. Mm-hmm. A very, very um, insightful music video that was made. Okay. Now, still, with that being said, they have <laughs> a personality. Uh, they really do, uh, you see, have a personality. So, on one hand, their responsibility is to honor, you see, to serve and protect. Uh, even the most serious situations and then at the same time they are able to let their hair down uh, when they're not in that type of environment uh, paperwork or otherwise uh, then you see you can see them in all sorts of places sometimes that you don't know so the whole point they always know what's right and yet they still are human. They have a personality and they like to enjoy life as well. So that's why I'm just telling you is the information I'm about to share with you now. I want to assure you that I was taught right. You heard me say this before. I was taught right. Now, even if you see me at the club in another few days, worlds, baby. It still doesn't mean that the information I'm sharing with you today is not accurate, is not truthful, is not right. And this is what I really want to emphasize according to even people and their conscious decisions. Yes, it's very important that we practice what we preach. 
But I'm here to tell you all the day, do not allow what somebody else is still doing ever stop you from believing in God and his righteousness and his willingness to help you to grow. Okay. Okay. And that's important. Here's why. The accounts that I will read are in Genesis chapter 28, 29, 30. And what they will show you are actually accurate history. And yet at the same time, people have read these accounts and they totally got a different view of even Jacob's personality, which was not correct, which was not correct. You see, even today, there is a nation of people who came from Abraham, you see, from his slave girl, uh, Sarah. Uh, yes, uh, not Sarah was, you see, his wife, to, who ended up, she was Sarai, name changed to Sarah, which means princess. And so, you see, God did that um, for a nation to come out of her. And yet, then you still had the slave girl, Hagar, who, what happened? Uh, when Ishmael was born, uh, there was a conflict. Uh, you see, as he got older, dangerous, uh, practical jokes going on. Very dangerous uh, when it talks about the poking of fun, etc. cetera. Uh, who, as we know, um, Isaac was born from Abraham from Sarah after that. And then, you know, she said, look, they can't be raised together. Now, with that being said, see, Ishmael still grew and he had a nation come out of him. Okay. I'm not going to get into the aspects of the descendants, but I tell you what, the, some of the descendants of Ishmael down to this day actually have a conflict, you see, as they were referenced, with the descendants who actually came from, you see, um, Isaac, Abraham Isaac, okay? Now, what I want to emphasize, and, and this is something for you to really still contemplate on this, is that God actually still purpose out of his see out of his own mouth he said what he was going to do with the descendants of Isaac you see and then still the arrangements that he even made for Ishmael Hagar's son was no small gift see of abundance and he certainly wouldn't want them fighting against one another. That's one thing that I'm going to say about that on that end. Now, we're coming down to Jacob's day. You see, Isaac had Jacob. And then there was a time when, you see, uh, there was Isaac and Jacob, Esau. Yeah. And Esau, you see, was already showing a great disrespect for the spiritual things that God had even given him as as the firstborn, because they were really born as twins. But you see, what happened? Uh Isaac uh 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 you see leg poked out first or what have you. And so it was like, okay, he breached the room first, he came out first. And so he was given that firstborn, even though they both really were, you see, conceived at the same time. Now, see, that's also um important uh, uh, to know because of the simple fact since um, Esau really was showing a great disrespect uh, non-appreciation for the spiritual gifts that would come from Abraham that would come from um, Abraham and also uh, Abraham as that would come from Isaac and then really coming from Jehovah God, the true God. <laughs> See, already, when you look at the whole situation, the, the, the whole leading up to this point of Jacob doing what he needed to do to get that firstborn blessing, 
you would see that Jacob was really still just doing what God wanted him to do. The true God wanted him to do because of the simple fact he was seeing everything that Esau was doing. In fact, even in the book of Hebrews, I think it states that God hated Esau. And now, isn't that interesting? Now, what I want to continue to say, I'll show us that is Esau was upset when that blessing was taken away um, uh, from him and given to Jacob. And some people didn't agree with that, uh, the method or the way that it was done. All the same, we're going to see in other accounts that Esau, even, um, you know, married persons that, you know, just, that brought great grief upon, you see, uh, Rebecca, who Isaac had married. OK, uh, Rebecca, who Isaac had married. And that's one thing I, I want to emphasize that uh, Esau and Jacob came from Rebecca. So uh, Isaac. And see, remember, I'm just doing all this from my head, but I, I still say, remember, you can look this up yourself as well, but you're going to have these accounts read to you. So with that being said, uh, it continues along the line that even Rebecca was just too through uh, to the point of Esau's, uh, you see, uh, marriages and things of the nature. And then Abraham backed her on that, then um, as far as talking to Jacob, saying, look, uh, don't you go marry those daughters from that land, but then go do what Rebecca even said to go to the land of Laban, see, which was Rebecca's brother. OK, now with that being said, when Jacob got there, see, I'm moving ahead, but it's a lot of stuff that happened in between Jacob went to the land of the Orientals and there was an opportunity for him to uh, work for Laban. Now Laban told Jacob he didn't want him working for free. And so then Jacob ended up saying, well, you know what? Uh, give me, let me see. There was uh, the older daughter, there was Leah, and then there was a younger daughter named Rachel. He wanted Rachel. Uh, he said he'll work seven years for it. Now, during that time, Laban noticed how hard and what a good worker Jacob was, you see. And the thing about it is, when it came time to give Jacob his wife, did he do it? He said, no, it just wouldn't be right for me to give the younger one, you see, uh, to you before the older one is married. So he snuck in. The older one, he snuck in uh, Leah. Okay. Now, so Jacob had to work another seven years to actually, you see, then uh, to get Rachel, the, yes, the younger one. So with that also uh, being said, during that time when it came for, you know, when Jacob had offspring and, and, you know, and he should have received all his monies and things of that nature. Uh, there was a deal made uh, with Laban um, in a hereditary type of a gene spicings, if you will, a sense that the odds were when he told Jacob that he could. Uh, uh, take all the speckled uh, type sheep or, or what have you. You know, the odds really were that Jacob wasn't going to make off too well in the sense of, you see, um, abundance of, of wealth because, you know, goats just weren't, you know, really normally would be produced that way from what I understand. And But guess what? God bless Jacob. See, he's showing his approval again where all the sheep, the majority of sheep, I believe, turned out and or the goats turned out the way that, you know, um, that made Jacob very rich. And I think it was done like both ways where he went both ways uh, uh, to show that God still end up blessing him no matter what deal Laban um, actually had. Now, here it is. We're coming up on 15 minutes. So still bear with me because I told you I'm just trying to put all this stuff in the show. 
There's an account you heard me mention in Humanitarians. You see, Humanitarians keep your humanity. That I mentioned there are times doing your job where it's just unfair, you see, as you know. And yet, if you're doing what you love, guess what? It keeps you wanting to succeed in what you're doing, to honor, to serve, to protect, to do your job to the best of your, you see, ability and expertise, you see. And so there is an account that here it is. Notice what was said in Genesis chapter 29, verse 20. After Laban had already, you know, made it seem like he was going to be an honest businessman. It still said that, and Jacob proceeded to serve seven years for Rachel, but in the eyes, they proved to be like some few days because of his love for her. See, when you love what you're doing, even though persons don't always show, you see their appreciation for what you do, uh, the help you give to the community, the way you keep everyone safe, you see, feeling secure. And yet, there may be some, you see, <laughs> like Laban, that's all I'm going to say, uh, that seem like they're always just trying to get over on you for one reason or the other, or even insulting your intelligence. Because you have ones, like your family members, you see, who still benefit greatly from what you're doing. It keeps you enjoying your job, enjoying your work, enjoying your weeks and months and years, you see. So I just want to thank you uh, for that. Now, with all that being said, I gave you a, a rundown of what is in the readings. In the conclusion of this series, I'll read those three accounts to you, stopping at certain points to reference back to this part four, so that then you'll be able to see the whole picture of Jacob's personality, Esau's personality, you see, um, Jacob's mother's personality, uh, Jehovah God's personality, and so forth. So that you can see even sometimes the different personalities, the different motives that causes this type of friction or that type of friction, even among nations at times. Because I'm here to tell you today, we know even the nation of Israel came from the descendancy of Jacob, you see. And the thing about it is, even though persons try to make Jacob even look a certain way, mm -mm, you see how God was blessing him, the true God, every step of the way, you see, even was letting him know through a dream, I'm going to be in communication with you through your dreams and even through my messenger of angels. You see, that's what Jacob's ladder was all about. Letting him know, I'm going to be with you. But let me stop right there. You know, it's already like 19 minutes. And so then we'll conclude this series with a Bible reading. Uh, from Genesis, those three chapters I mentioned. Have a very wonderful day, you humanitarians. Take good care of yourself.